Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. So in today's episode, I'd like to present you a new or modified feature available in C++ 20. You might know that since C++ 11, a lot of people like me teach you that you should use range-based for loop over regular other loop constructs because they are safer by default. Now I have a pattern here that comes up from time to time. In line number six here, I have a std vector v with a couple of numbers, okay? And what I want to do here in a range-based for loop, I want to iterate over v, printing out the current index and the value of the element stored in there. Of course, it's quite easy and simple to iterate over a vector thanks to range-based for loops. So I say I'm taking const ref e for each element in my vector. And then inside the range-based for loop, I can simply reference e using that to print it out. So that part is, is quite good and I think also easy. The more problematic part before C20 is my counter variable. To maintain that, I need another variable. I call that one idx here in line number eight. And the issue I now have and in others, it's outside the range based for loop. So that means IDX is leaking in the adjacent scope. Somebody can use IDX after line 11. And that might lead to confusions. It's also in a larger program, not easy to spot that IDX is now used inside the range based for loop. So all these things I would say are drawbacks to, to that approach. And um, of course, we have a couple of options. What we can do here is to say, okay, at least we limit the scope here by creating our own scope. Well, that helps IDX now no longer leaks in the adjacent scope. With the curly braces, it's also easier to see what belongs together. But these all are additional things we have to do. And usually we like to have it down to the point in C++, I would say. So let's remove these curly braces here. What I can do in C++ 20 is range-based for loops is the same thing we can do for regular for loops. I can provide an initializer. So this is what I have here. I can now say that my size TIDX semicolon goes into the head of my range based for loop. And if I transform this now, you notice from earlier episodes how range based for loops look. So now my IDX variable goes into the scope the compiler creates for us. We have here our range one variable. We have the begin and end iterators. We have the regular for loop the compiler here uses to compare begin and end for not equal and the pre-increment operator, as well as dereferencing the element, putting it in my requested variable e. So this is the version we can also write, but the version C++20 allows us to write, I think is the nicer one because it's shorter and yeah, down to the point. The only sad thing that now still remains, at least in my view, is that there is no way in range-based for loops, at least yet, to have the increment, which we have available for the for loops, to also increment IDX in the hat. That would drop a few other mistakes we can now make. So I hope you can enjoy this new feature for range-based for loops in C++20 and that it helps you to write safer code. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye-bye.